Today I wanted to do a reading on an extraordinary personality and I was inspired by the Netflix series The Spy. I'd never heard of Eli Cohen before, I didn't know beyond and the only reason I watched The Spy was because Sasha Baron Cohen was in it and I have to say he did a phenomenal job. Those of you that only know Sasha Baron Cohen through Borat, you're in for a real treat with this series. and. Um, so I was inspired to do a reading on the spy that Sasha Baron Cohen played because I found it an extraordinary feat for a human what happened here, what um, the life that this spy lived. So Sasha Baron Cohen plays the role of Eli Cohen, coincidentally. Um, <clears throat> and Eli Cohen was, was one of the greatest spies of Israeli uh, Mossad history and he infiltrated the Syrian government at the highest levels between the years 61 and 64 and was instrumental in a lot of the wins and the successes that the Israelis had against the Syrians at that time, especially during the Six Day War in 1965, 67 I believe. And so I was really, I wanted to know what makes a person like that tick? What makes someone want to become a spy, be a spy, and be it on that level that he was he was at because his his spy game was flawless and what did it take for someone to be like that so a quick back history on who Eli Cohen was okay so Eli Cohen was born on December 26th 19 December 1924 and um, moved to Syria sorry he was born in Alexandria yeah, in Alexandria Egypt got it now to a devout Jewish and Zionist family and his father had moved from Aleppo to Egypt in 1914. In 1947 he chose to enlist in the Egyptian army as an alternative to paying the prescribed sum that all young Jews were obliged to play but he was declared in ineligible on grounds of questionable loyalty and he eventually went and studied at home because he faced harassment by the Muslim Brotherhood. He finished a degree in electronics, but he also coordinated during his time in Egypt Jewish and Zionist activities. He was arrested and interrogated over his Zionist activities, but then he continued on. Eventually, um, he left Israel. Sorry, he was working in Egypt for Israeli interests at that time, but he left Egypt to move to Israel after it became unbearable for Jewish people to continue living in Israel. And... Um, he was recruited in 1957 by the Israel Defense Forces, was placed in military intelligence where he became a counterintelligence analyst. He then attempted to join the Mossad. He was rejected because apparently um, they found him too, too much of a risk taker and they saw him as being um, jeopardizing. And so he resigned from the military counterintelligence and worked as a filing clerk in a Tel Aviv insurance office. He then married Nadia Majaid, or I'm not sure how to pronounce that properly, but I'm sure you guys do. And they had three children, Sophie, Irit, and Shai. And then at some point, the Mossad start, recruited him again because the director general, Meir Amit, was looking for a special agent to infiltrate the Syrian government and couldn't find the right person because like we um, there was nobody on the ground they didn't have any eyes or ears on the ground in Syria so they had no idea what Syria was up to in any which way shape or form and they needed to know and so Cohen was surveyed for two weeks he was put under surveillance and was judged suitable for recruitment and training he was then informed that the Mossad had decided to recruit him, underwent an intense six months course at the Mossad training school, and then he was given a false identity as a Syrian businessman who was returning to the country after living in Argentina. He moved to Buenos Aires in 1961 because there was a sizable Syrian community in Argentina. That's where he gained his contacts and his ground and his bearing. Also started building up his business continuing to build up the created business that the Mossad had created for him. He then moved to Damascus in February 1962 under the name Kamel Amin Tabet. 
and then he hobnobbed with with high-level Syrian people. Now, there's some debate about the closeness of his relationship because in the movie it made it seem like he was very close to the Syrian president or who became the Syrian president, Al Hafiz. And um, but afterwards, in a 2001 interview with Al Jazeera. Hafiz distanced himself from Cohen. He said that such a friendship would be impossible given the fact that he had been in Moscow until 1962. After Hafiz became prime minister, Cohen might even have been considered for the position of Syrian deputy minister of defense, it is claimed, but he was a uh, confidant or an advisor to the um, deputy minister of defense, although Hafiz's secretary has denied that this was the case. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They claim that um, Israel propagated these lies to make um, Syria seem weak, and um, but I I don't know. And we'll see about that. You know, we'll see about that in 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 the reading in the layout that I'm going to do now. So um, some of the the his most famous achievement was the tour of the Golan Heights, in which he collected intelligence on the Syrian fortifications. Um, Cohen had suggested that the Syrian soldiers plant trees to protect them from the sun and so he had trees planted at every position. Although ostensibly placed to provide shade for Syrian forces, the trees were used by the Israel Defense Forces as targeting markers by the Israel military during the Six Day War and enabled Israel to capture the Golan Heights in two days with relative ease. Um, but newly appointed Syrian intelligence colonel Ahmed Swedani trusted no one and he disliked Cohen. And because of this, during Cohen's last secret visit to Israel in November 64, uh, Cohen expressed fear of the possibility of discovery and stated that he wished to terminate his assignment in Syria. The twin purposes of the visit were to pass on intelligence and to enable Cohen to witness the birth of his third child, but despite this, Israel intelligence asked him to return to Syria one more time. Um, but in January 1965, Syrian efforts to find a high-level mole were stepped up, and using Soviet-made tracking equipment and assisted by hired Soviet experts, a period of radio silence was observed, and it was hoped that any illegal transmissions could be identified. They found him because of that. He was transmitting um, radio signals to Israel and they traced it to their source, his apartment. On the 24th of January 1965, they broke into his apartment. He was caught in the middle of the transmission to Israel. He was jailed and tortured and then sentenced to death. And he was hung on the 15th of May 1965. He wrote in his final letter, I am begging you, my dear Nadia, not to spend your time in weeping about something already passed. Concentrate on yourself, looking forward for a better future. T to this day, um, Nadia Cohen is fighting to get the remains of her husband returned to Israel. So far, they've returned a wristwatch, which is on display at the Mossad headquarters, but the body is rumored to be in, or the remains are rumored to be in, for some reason, in in Soviet or in Russia at this time and they haven't been returned yet. So I feel that given the amount of spying and going on and the way this was dealt with, I, I already feel like this is something deeper. This is something deeper, them not returning the body, them, you know, like still this was um, humiliation and betrayal this this was personal in a sense so i do feel he had that connection to hafiz that hafiz is, was denying okay so that's my personal feeling but who knows right so we'll lay out the cards and see what comes up and i hope you enjoy this hey guys so here's the layout for Eli Cohen or Kemal Amin Thabit and um, let's have a look at what kind of a personality this man was. 
<sighs> so here we are. We see him all the way at the top. And we know already, those of you that have been following my readings for some time now, you know that when somebody shows up on the top of the Lanoma, they're under control. They have everything under control. They can also be controlling characters. So there was a slight bit of control to him. There was a slight bit of arrogance to him. There was a slight, but he was act very, very confident. With the ship next to him, this was a man of vision. He had high goals, expectations, and dreams. And he expected his ships to come in. He expected only good to come to him. With the moon next to him, status and career was very important to him. Fame was the name of the game. He wanted to renown. He wanted to be known for something. Um, he wanted success. But we also, um, with the moon, it's also a soul card, right? So he was very deeply in touch with, with his inner flow, with his inner subconscious. And this leads us right to the fox. And the fox is also a multi-layered card. This can be, you know, it's so many things. But one thing, of course, is duplicity, is falseness. Is um, This indicates that he was a spy. He was false. He was duplicitous. Um, it also indicates uncanny instinct it can indicate also total truth right so the fox is it, it it's really a complicated card because it depends <laughs> depends on where it is and what it's next to and we see the fox here in between the stars and the moon so he was absolutely aware he was very truthful to himself and the people that he loved but he was duplicitous as in um, two-minded, two-faced to other people, right? So people saw him as cunning. They saw him as, and I want to say that not many people truly trusted him. And, ooh, that's opening up a door, but let's follow this uh, thread further. We also have the stars here. So the stars is indicated that he had higher ideals. He held ideals and he um, followed those ideals. And a lot of those were ideals were connected to his wife. So I don't know if he got those ideals through her or if she represented an ideal for him. But I feel that she was very strongly a part of who he became. I see here connected to the tree. The tree is life force energy and it also represents the spine or the backbone. So she was kind of his backbone. The tower can also represent the spine and the backbone. Right? So it represents something that's in your back that gives you strength. And his wife was definitely someone who gave him strength. She is a very strong person, very strong person, very independent as well. Um, but also she, she did feel alone. She felt like her, she spent her life alone. And we know that she didn't remarry after his passing or um, anything like that. And to this day, she tries to get his remains home, right? So we, with the tree, it's also, this is a very pragmatic, grounded person. He's very peaceful as well. This is a peaceful person. So he was peaceful, a visionary, a merchant, um, out for career and success, uh, duplicitous by any means necessary almost, but what keeps this in check is his um is the stars his higher ideals his his goals his hope but also when these two show up together so the stars and the moon it always indicates the stars and the moon and the sun in any combination almost indicates some kind of deep intuition instinct a tap into greater fields of consciousness which can represent psychic ability so these three coming together in the fox representing instinctual moves instinct instinct the nature of the instinct it's really he had a very strong instinct by which he went his instinct didn't fail him and he completely built like this is the rock that he stood on was his intuition and his instinct and um his nose was just impeccable he knew the ways he could scent he could scent speaking of nose he he smelled um indecision hearts so he knew people's hearts he knew the pathway of people he was a very good people reader people scanner people knower and he had a way of getting into their hearts he could seriously affect um their heart right their soul aspect of them so this was his his basic his his strength right we know that his um career boost came through his solid connection with for some reason, this card, I want to say, is Al-Hafez, the Syrian president at the time. So if this card is Syria. What happened around Syria here? And the time in Syria for him was, was 
I get like disquieted. There's this this quiet unease all the time. Why? Because of the mice, the um, the mountain, and the clouds. So this is latent anxiety, but firmly entrenched. You know that that slight anxiety that's just underneath the surface, and it's stuck there, right? It goes on and on and on, but we know that the president suffered under this anxiety as well. And it feels like um, that caused the president to be a little wily, to say the least, right? With a snake on top of his mind, this is how his thoughts flowed. But when we also look from Syria to the connecting cards to um, Eli Cohen, we got... De uh, karma or or finality with a cross here snake and over here we've got du pathways so duplicitous so for the president the case is clear or was clear for al hafez for syria back then it's this guy is a snake he's he's we've got two cards here right so the fox and the snake both in combination with eli and with syria and so it was, it was for syria it was like this guy's a snake he's not to be trusted it's done and I feel that um, Eli would have wanted to distance himself and felt nervous before the ending, right? And we know that is true, you know, so that's, that's already out there. He, he didn't want to return his last stint. He, he had a feeling something was coming up because Syria was getting more and more paranoid, more and more um, insecure. They were hunting for a high-level government mole, and he he was afraid. Um, we know that, I feel that with this moon card and the ship, and the ship represents desires, subconscious, um, he wanted to be Kamal, right? So Kamal, I feel, was like an alter ego of his, but Kamal was a very successful businessman. And so I feel that he kind of in his subconscious, and we talk about this in remote viewing, about having firm paradigms of your reality. And when you remote view or remote influence, remote influencing I do not recommend, but you can shift those paradigms. And I feel that's that's kind of what's happened, false paradigms of reality in a sense. And um, But I also feel that he really wanted to be, his sole desire was to be the successful businessman that Kamal was or represented. And he wanted that to, to stay. So I feel that the lines blurred between his identity of Eli and Kamal, in, at least towards the end. And this, this, in order for his front to be true, and I haven't read this elsewhere, I don't know, but I feel that his business was real. The business that Kamal had or built up, this import-export business, I do feel that it was real and um, they had to make it real. They had to make it real for the cover to to be absolutely um, true. And I feel like that's where he spent a lot of his time as well was making this business run for real. And his business, I feel, or his success with that business was connected for sure, right? So sure connection here. And this is also work with uh, the Syrian president. But funnily enough, he, he felt his work was, um, it was heavy, it was difficult. And a lot of times his work was blocked by Al-Hafez, right? So there was, um, he had to do a lot of personality adaptation in order to deal with Al-Hafez because it feels like this guy was seriously paranoid. This could also be Swedani, who was the advisor or a... Um, what do you call it? Um, secret police, that kind of thing. Advisor to Al Hafez at the time. And Swedani was the one that caught Ailey Cohen in flagranti while he was passing off messages or radioing messages to the Israelis. Um, and Swedani, it was said, was very paranoid. Didn't trust anyone. Didn't trust anyone at all. And didn't trust... Cohen. And I feel that um, uh, the, the Syrians were working because they knew they had a high-level mole and 
they were working with the Soviets to try and find it, this mole, as far as I remember. And the Soviets gave them equipment to trace radio signals. And what they did was a blackout of the, um, the entire city so, or, or city parts of the city where no radio signals were supposed to go out. But um, Ailey made a mistake and I maybe he didn't know about that blackout, wasn't aware of it, but he was sending radio signals and they caught him based on the equipment that they received from the Soviets. That's how he was caught. They burst into his apartment and caught him in flagranti. And So if this is Al-Hafiz and let's say this is Swedani or Al-Hafiz's thinking process. Let's see here. I feel like, um, cause I'm looking at the heart over here because I went like, I was starting tonight and it just brought me here. But first off, Al-Hafiz was very nervous. So the president, very, and a very nervous guy, um, deeply loyal, valued loyalty. But he, I don't feel he wasn't the, the most innovative, so he would have kept a certain certain thing going, let's put it that way. But also a unifier, a uniter. One ring to rule them all, one ring to bind them. That's, that's what came into my mind. So I feel like uh, Hafez would have been a unifier. And Swedani was definitely, there was, he was missing something. Something not right about him. Desires, concerns, yes, this is Swedani. So when I knight him, he gets to the mice, the clouds, the ship. So a definitely a, a shady character, Swedani, but also someone who was, who may have suffered under, uh, dark depressions. Someone who's very secretive as well, kept secrets, the book. Um, I feel like when I look at the heart and we're going back to Ailey Cohen slash Kamal, and I feel like when, when I look here, this is Ailey, but when I look over here, this is Kamal. And these are two very distinctly different personalities. Maybe that's why that's showing up as well. Two different. Um... And his wife played a significant role in having the strength to go with, through with things. She, she gave him that strength. She gave him that strength. I feel like this may have been his handler Yitzhak. It's a very protective energy. And this person is shown in the series as having felt protective in an appropriate way, not in an inappropriate way, towards the wife of, of Ailey, right? So this bear card, um, very bureaucratic here, right? So very taking care of her like that. But I feel like afterwards they have no connection. I don't feel they're in connection anymore. And this Yitzhak may have passed away. So I have to check if he's still alive. I'm not sure. But... Um, there, the wife is still alive, Nadia, and these two are not in connection anymore. But when we look at the connecting cards between Yitzhak, the handler, and Cohen, we get the heart and the public. So he really made the story public, I feel, and there was a real love and a reliance and a good understanding, harmonious understanding between the two. So they really got along. I also feel like home, so if this is home and this is heart, um, work, so money, okay, travels. So he loved his home very much. If this is, so this would be Israel probably, right? So he kept Eli or Kemal, right? Kept secrets, kept secrets, the book about the home. So even when he was caught, I don't feel like he revealed anything because um, the secrets about the home, right? The home is not here or there, it's, it's underneath. So the book was remained closed. Very loyal, 
very loved, loved, loved his home country of Israel. And loved the money though too, wanted more money. Home funded. No, this is not home. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what is this? When I, when I see this card, I think of immediately the, the thought came into my mind, Paul Revere. So I'm going to go with the U.S. as being this card. They seem to be showing up in these readings for me as the fish a lot of times. Now that I've stated that, probably next reading it's going to change, but whatever for now, I'm going to go with this being the U.S. next to Paul Revere here, <laughs> descriptor card. Uh, definitely home. And they were lacking information or lacking info about Syria. So this is getting interesting whoa uh, showing up as the finances card i feel like they financed israel in a lot of their decisions which led to great success right and in return though they must have gotten something and so if they're lacking a solid ground connection to syria right syria seems to have done a good block off towards israel and the u.s they weren't, there was no, there's lacking. There was no seeing in here, right? So the mice, but also um, nobody on the ground. Uh, resistance, walls, impenetrable, defense. So Kemal would have gotten behind those walls through his direct connection to Al-Hafiz. That means that whatever Israel found out through Kemal, and look at the connecting cards, the heart, so Kamal really, or Eli really loved his home country. He did a great, um, he did it a service. Uh, but whatever information they had or received, they would pass on to the U.S. And that being said, I feel like the connecting cards now, I'm looking between the U.S. and Kamal. And I'm saying it distinctly Kamal because I feel like, I feel like, Ellie or Eli morphed into Kamal like he I feel loved that this is an alter ego this is why he never tripped up he lived out the sides of himself that he couldn't live out on the other side in his normal day-to-day -day life um, here here was a successful multi-millionaire businessman and he could live he was all about that life I feel he was all about that life and I do feel that he felt guilty in a way with the fox underneath his feet for being this duplicitous and but I feel back to the to finish off my first sentence with if this is the US and here we have anxiety or thoughts or fluttering or speaking communication Eli ah, the whip I feel like the US knew what was coming and they may have issued a warning and they may have issued this warning to Israel but Israel was false. Um, this makes me think of the daughter of Nadia and Eli, who stated in the news that, of course, the series isn't quite accurate or true to life. How could it be? But um, she understands why there would be discrepancies and certain things weren't told. Um, there's something that that I feel Nadia knows or the wife knows because she sees him as false. So there's something here about his image or how he's being portrayed or represented that's not quite true. But also Israel in their dealings with him were false. And I feel like in that friendly, friendly way, leaving options open. But at the end of the day, they were they linked him. Now I'm starting to think that his execution was allowed. All of a sudden what popped into my mind was if the U.S. tried to warn him because they had gotten information and if the Soviets were supporting Syria, then this was a proxy between U.S. and, and the Soviets and the proxy was fought out by Israel and the Syrians. And I feel that maybe a warning was issued and I feel like the Soviets knew and possibly they passed on the information to Swedani, but because of the close friendship and relationship to 
Eli Cohen Swedani knew that he had to have final say. He had to have final information, something which seals the deal, because um, he couldn't just show up and, and accuse Eli Cohen. It was too, he was too, had too high a standing. He needed something solid. And I feel that everybody knew about Eli except for Al Hafez. And this is why um, he's ultimately, as long as he's on this plane, written off Eli. He feels tremendously betrayed. We see that with the fox and the snake because if we look at the connector cards um, between Eli and Al Hafez, it's the pathways. He chose the wrong path, wrong pathway. And here we have finality, snake. So he's made his decision that this this guy is a snake. And I feel with everything underneath him, the only thing that Eli is looking towards is this finality. And it's like um, he's nervous about it. But at the same time, I felt this yearning or this feeling for, for everything to stop, to come to an end, to, um, yeah. But Swedani wanted security. He wanted. He didn't want just rumors and hearsay. He wanted security that couldn't be revoked, that couldn't be changed. And I feel that if the Americans knew, the Israelis knew. And so they were false to him. And I, this is tough to say, but I feel like they allowed it to happen. Why would they allow it to happen? Um, it stated and said that they tried everything they could to, um, through diplomatic channels, human rights channels, things like that, to prevent anything from happening. But I feel like that was too late. And I feel like they, there was this lack of trust with a fox. This person is not trusted. So whoever the fox is close to, this person isn't trusted. Sorry. Not a trustworthy person. So if Israel had the fox here. Oh my gosh. They didn't. Oh my gosh. They didn't trust Eli not to reveal secrets about Israel. They didn't trust Eli not to. Re oh my gosh. Okay. So immediate download is that Eli took on his role of Kemal so much that, I mean, he was five years undercover, only went home three times. If he had stayed there much longer and he hadn't been caught, he would have been Kemal. I think Eli preferred his Kemal life. I think on his last trip back home, the Israelis must have noticed something's not quite right. Something is off about him. And I feel like they, they couldn't let him live. They had to take the information that he brought them and work with that, but they couldn't let him remain a risk factor. Even if he went home, even if he went home to Israel, he knew too much. He knew too much and he was in too deep and he had too many good connections. He'd built up his business and he would have kept that business going. He would have built up another business and probably used the same business contacts and um, through that jeopardize everything. Plus, they, if he stayed in Syria, if he ended up staying in Syria and living out his life, then who's to say that he wouldn't suddenly turn on Israel and become a full Syrian afterwards? He was a Syrian Jew, like his, his background was Syrian. So there's a loss of trust that happened between Israel and Kemal because of this lengthy stay, this total immersion, and um, they felt he couldn't trust him anymore. They felt he couldn't, they couldn't bring him home and trust him to just lay low but they couldn't leave him over there for obvious reasons so there was only one solution and this was an elegant solution to pin the entire thing on syria boom oh my gosh and this this must have if, if um the soviets helped syria like i said and the u.s helped Israel, then this was a proxy war between Israel and the Soviets. And I feel that um, the wife also, Nadia, also felt that Kemal wasn't wasn't true anymore, okay? He wasn't true anymore. He, he totally um, 
rooted himself in a beautiful life, in the beautiful status, in this upper level, upper crust living, in this merchant lifestyle, this wealthy man, because he saw himself as a wealthy man. This is immediate personality are the cards that are around, right? So with a ship, the lilies, the fish, these are all the indicators of great wealth. So the ship has to do also with your, your goods coming in, with your dreams and your visions becoming real. And this Kemal life, we see where his dreams and his visions, his deep dreams and his visions became real. And even though he kept it a secret from the Israelis, what his true dreams and visions were was to be this wealthy man, they still noticed something's off about him. Something was off about him when he came back. And I feel like um, under torture, I don't feel like he revealed secrets. I, don't, I, I feel that he kept them but they were definitely concerned that he would talk. Oh my gosh, these cards, you guys, these cards. Um, he was very sure of himself. He was almost, I guess, too sure, too sure. And that became a block. And he made wrong decisions because he was too sure. <sighs> and Syria or Al Hafez was worried, concerned, a unifier, obsessed with Israel, needed glory, personal glory. This was, this was getting him was personal glory for Syria. Swadani. Quiet. Concerned. This was a very nervous, concerned man. Very dark thinker. Um, unfortunately, that's where his wisdom came, was that he, he banked on the worst in people. He, he didn't see the best in people. He saw the worst. And that's usually what what stayed what served him mm. and i feel that swedani there's a connection here to israel somehow a secret hidden hidden connection to israel i feel the u.s knew they tried to warn him i feel the soviets knew and swedani knew Everybody knew. The only players that didn't know what was being played behind their backs and who was being was was uh, Eli Cohen and Al Hafiz. These two were puppets. They were played. They were played. They were played. No, they couldn't they couldn't let him come out of the cold he was he was in too deep in way too deep way too deep and um, nobody trusted him he'd lost the trust of Israel false and Israel is is uh, there's a false legend right or a false story or a false narrative that's that's being told about him his wife didn't trust him his daughter. And this must be the Soviets. And if this is the Soviets, all ties into this fox card, right? So a lot of like just stuff. The mice between Soviets and USA. 
Yeah, this is a Soviet. <laughs> and in another reading, the Soviets showed up as as uh, the dog. So yeah, this is the the Soviets. So they stayed mum on the whole story. And I feel like um, there was a lack of intel for the states on the Soviets and on Syria. And the, the thing was for him to get in so deep, they wanted him in that deep, but it just took too long, too long to build up. They wanted him in that deep to get this info, truth. His true mission was not Syria, but I feel like even he didn't know that. He didn't know that. They needed intel on Russia and possibly Syria was a way to Syria the lack of information secrets safe intel but the target was Russia they needed intel on Russia and they wanted uh, Russian dealings with Syria whoa 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 And here we have the U.S. and Israel, and in between is the mice, and here we have Syria and the Soviets, and secrets, or closed book, no knowledge. This is no knowledge. Right. Knowledge and wisdom eaten. Block, resistance, wall. So they were shut out and he was away over that wall. And they were afraid he was going to turn. He was, he was, he was, he wasn't going to, I don't think so, because even under torture, uh, he didn't reveal the secrets. But they didn't trust him. They didn't trust him and nobody trusted him. His, his, the ground underneath his feet was pulled out uh, by all these players here. Oh my gosh. Alrighty, let's have a look at the... Um, so the center cards are have to do with betrayal and secrets. Hidden pathways. Nighttime moves, because the moon can also represent the nighttime, right? Dark moves. These are dark moves. Shadow moves. Shadow plays. Even Yitzhak didn't know. I'm sure of it. He didn't know. His handler had no idea. This was a decision that was made outside of the known for these people here. Wow, wow, wow. So we've got... Yitzhak always stood to him or Eli publicly and was also and that's in the movie too was that he was concerned or worried about um, repetitions right or returning going back going back around again worry ring yeah he made that public let's see here I feel like death or the ending was a release for him it was sweet and I've stated this oftentimes before but I was taught um, and in deep esotericism you'll read or hear that death is actually sweet we've been trained through Hollywood propaganda machines that death is something horrible and to be feared because that's the ultimate threat that they can hold over us and make us afraid of but the reality is that a lot of people have 
either passed over, come back, or spoken about in some way. Um, but death is, is sweet. And you just got to feel into those words. Just close your eyes and feel into that. But um, I can't say it any other way, but death was sweet. It was a release for him from hardship and, and pain. Um, a lot of observers gossip watching him lose and oopsies so I've always stated that um, for me in the cards in the Lenamon cards death would show itself through some combination of the mice and the Sun and here we see it again we can knight the Sun and um, there we have the loss of life right so we've got the mice the owls the tree and so it was a quick death. This was uh, the hanging was quick, swift. And again, here we have this, this, but it was, it was also rigged as entertainment for the masses, right? So execution, masses, hanging, entertainment. There was lots of talk. Oh my gosh. But in Syria, I feel like there was a blackout. It was like a media blackout. Some kind of a... Yes, it was all over the papers and everything, but only what was allowed, right? But otherwise, this was a taboo topic. You have to be careful. Loss of life. There's another combination. The tree represents life and the mice. Okay. He was a beautiful person, like a truly beautiful person. And this is this is what made his success, right? So when we do these uh, things, just forget about the last row. The last row represents um, answers or future or some other things. But he was, he, he was a patriot. He was, he really loved his home country. He loved his home. He was a loving person, a giving person, a solid person, but also a man of vision. A man with strong dreams, a, a strong soul. That's what I'm getting, a solid, strong soul. Solid, strong soul. He was a soul of a man. Then we've got the letter. We know that he wrote a letter in his final days, so this could be what is referenced here. Um, strengthening his loyalty, speaking of his loyalty, right? And giving hope or there, there must have been something optimistic about that letter but definitely talking about his loyalties so we know that for a fact so I feel like this is what's being referenced here but also of course the news cycle right and of this building of the image of a loyal son of the land you know I feel like um, this one's tricky. This this has to do with Nadia, who was very uh, the mother of his children, but she also became very bitter, maybe for a while. This destroyed the harmony in her home. But this could also reference two wives. Oh, but we also know that Nadia petitioned, petitioned, and here we have government and bureaucracy bringing change. That was final. That was destructive. So she, Nadia, blames her government. Oh my gosh, Nadia, Nadia, Nadia hasn't 
forgiven the government yet. It, it's such a great show on the outside, you know, or, but what's going on on the inside of people and inside the homes is, is wow. So I feel like the government took care of Nadia for life in some way, shape or form. She also received that status. But um, when she got the message, it's like she she blamed them. She blamed them for this this loss, this tremendous loss. And I also feel that um, we have Nadia for Eli here, but there was another woman in Syria for Kemal. And I hope you guys caught that. Right. So when, when he was home in Israel, it was like Eli and Nadia. But in Syria, there was another significant woman for him. And she, she was very high level. Because if this is the, the, the president, and this is Swedani, but this can also represent simultaneously um, the other woman. The snake also represents the other woman. Um, there was someone else in Syria for him and so she was the maternal influence but this one was was a real connection the, the chemistry was off the chain and she was a high level she came from a high level family in, in Syria or a high level uh, person may have even been related to the president or to Sudani could have been I can't remember what the Netflix video showed, but um, according to the reports, he had multiple lovers, but they don't talk about one specific, but I'm seeing one specific show up here. And we've got karma, or um, meant to be. We've got marriage. We've got uh, security, right? We've got the anchor. These are all like rock solid things around this woman. So I feel that, um, he was torn between being Eli and Kamal, and I feel like Kamal was pulling him more than Eli was at this point. And he didn't blame his wife at all. It's, his wife was beautiful. It's just he fell into a different lifestyle. He fell into this different lifestyle. And there she she really had a, a, a lockdown on him. And I feel like Israel, oh my God, they knew it. They knew it. They knew it. And they they felt he was they felt he was going to turn. This this oh my gosh, they felt he was going to turn. They didn't trust him anymore, so they they cut him loose. And they made this big show that they were trying to get him back and trying to do all this. But in reality, they they that was the most elegant solution. Okay, let's see here. Stars, Swift. Hmm. For some reason, the iron is showing up here for me a lot. I don't know why the key, the anchor, the, the sky, then I just feel iron and I get this iron taste in my mouth and um, a lot of blood a lot the stars is something that is a lot so I I, I I feel this is speaking of his torture and his time in lockup And this was a false game just played by all. And I feel like the two that knew the least were Eli himself and Al Hafez. Whew. Okay. Um, I feel that
his children may may have to battle okay um this this or had battled right this this loss of their their father from the home i just i'm just feeling a lot of delusion when it comes to this year a lot of illusion that was uh revealed a lot of illusion that was revealed so in a nutshell you guys i feel like he was an extraordinary person he was the soul of a soul of a man strong soul solid instincts which helped him and uh, which he could completely rely on very pragmatic down to earth grounded business minded and natural businessman and um he understood the ways of people's hearts and he could move people emotionally and that's what made him who he was very charismatic he had a huge heart right so a lot of courage did snap decisions was very emotional was also emotionally um how should i put this underdeveloped <laughs> he was a child at heart um he was very optimistic happy-go-lucky um quick to get angry but also quick to forgive but he could lock away things and he had a gentle heart like this is gentle right fickle maybe too but um he could keep secrets and lock things away he loved his homeland he loved to be on the go and to travel and he loved this 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 confrontation this edge right this edge and the emotional immaturity is is kind of what kept his heart his dreams going you know in his final moments i feel that he he spoke his sadness or his um he prayed for his wife he prayed for his wife and children in his final moments so if we see this as uh, the sudden death moment right the final moment and we see that he thought of his wife okay the mother of his children if we see this as death as well and um i feel he he felt bad for the betrayal right betrayal the heart the fickle heart different pathways and he he did his job to the best of his abilities up until um a certain point where he it wasn't just that he wanted to stop because he was afraid of being discovered that was one thing but he was afraid that he wouldn't get out anymore he wouldn't come back or want to come back after that and they wouldn't let him they forced him back into it they didn't trust him they they lost trust in him and they made it seem like um oh they want him to go back to get even closer to get even more information and the the original the intent behind it all which they didn't talk about was to gain fill in the blanks i feel like this is a blank and he was meant to fill in the blanks regarding information of the soviet and union and israel and i feel that they made it seem like that's why they're sending him back but they didn't trust him nobody trusted him okay all right you guys that was eli cohen and i hope you enjoyed and um god bless his soul and the souls of all involved that it furthers humanity furthers us in our growth and understanding in some way and um that all of the suffering serves a purpose in our evolution and um that it brings us closer and closer to peace that's that's my prayer so that all of it wasn't for nothing okay and um may these people the innocence in this whole story be protected and sheltered all right you guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye hey guys i am starting a new psychic mediumship intuitive development group september 21st 2019 and you don't want to miss this one it'll take us right through october and into the halloween season which is going to be absolutely fun so sign up for it let me know if you're interested in furthering your gifts and abilities um, but also developing them if you feel like you know there's something latent there and you'd really like to discover it more but also to learn more about how to deal with certain things that come up and arise as you move through this world of psychic and mediumship um, development and and messaging i'm excited to see you there take care bye 
Hi everyone, welcome to my Patreon account. I would love it if you stepped over and checked out my page and checked out the three different tiers that I have on offer for you guys. I would love to receive your support. And if you have never done Patreon before, head on over. There are wonderful explanations that you can check out on how to support your favorite channels, your favorite creators, or people that you find support worthy. And um, so of course you receive something in return and those are the tiers that you're going to see over there and you can choose which one that you want to sign up for. So thank you so much and talk to you soon.